Hello, Eric King coming to you once again from Nugget of Truth. In today's uh, study, we're going to look at the seven dispensations. We're going to give a basic outline of dispensations. And I would like to say here that um, the Bible does teach dispensations. When we use the word dispensation, we're basically referring to a specific portion of time in which God is has developed and is allowing a specific program to operate. A program dealing with how he communicates to his creation, how he co communicates to humanity. And we find that the first dispensation began at the beginning of the creation of the two humans, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. And God made a covenant with them, an agreement with them, in the Garden of Eden. Now, all the way back in the first dispensation of time, actually before time began, time didn't begin till things started to die. Time began in the second dispensation. Time began the moment Adam and Eve sinned. That's when time began. But before that, in the first dispensation, they lived in eternity in a paradisical earth, an earth that was perfect and that was beautiful, the Garden of Eden. We've all tried to picture this in our minds, the perfect clean air, perfect everything, and it was gifted to them. And God made a covenant, and he told them that they could eat of any of the fruit in the garden, but they could not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we know that we don't know exactly how long this dispensation of perfection lasted. Most scholars believe that it wasn't that very long. It wasn't a long-lasting dispensation, and there are other reasons we could give for that, which we won't do right now because we're going to stick with our study here covering, covering the seven basic dispensations uh, uh, in God's plan. And so Adam and Eve were in that first dispensation. They broke that covenant. They partook of that fruit they were not supposed to. And the consequences of that, of that disobedience, um, was, was, was uh, sin. Sin and sin and death entered the world. Now, in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six through twenty-eight, and Genesis chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen, we find that they were given responsibilities in that dispensation of innocence, that dispensation of perfection. And then in Genesis chapter three, verses one through six, we find that they they broke that promise, and and that was the end of that dispensation, and the judgment that was put upon them because they broke that was the curse of sin and death. Genesis chapter 3 verses 7 through 19. So this Edenic dispensation, what a beautiful time that was before sin. The Edenic dispensation, the dispensation of innocence. Now after they sinned, things started to die. They felt ashamed of themselves. We enter the dispensation of consciousness. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, we call that the fall, the fall of humanity, the fall into sin. And so they enter another dispensation called the dispensation of consciousness. Now, this is also called the antediluvian dispensation, or the dispensation before the deluge, before the flood. Antediluvian, before the flood. This dispensation of innocence, actually, was the longest lasting dispensation. Now you've heard me say in other studies that actually the Mosaic uh, dispensation, the fifth dispensation, the dispensation of law, I've said is the longest lasting dispensation. And that's true for, uh, in regards to after the Abrahamic covenant was given, and we're going to get into that, but after the Abrahamic covenant was given, the longest dispensation of God, God's people directly was the dispensation of law, the Mosaic dispensation. But before we get to Abraham and before we get to Moses, this second dispensation after Adam and Eve sinned, this antediluvian dispensation, this dispensation of conscience. Now we call it the dispensation of conscience because Paul in the book of Romans in the New Testament says that those, even those descendants of Adam and Eve who have not the law, who knew not God, are operating under consciousness under human consciousness, minus God. And of course, it's a self-centered consciousness that we've developed after the fall of mankind. God we pushed out of the picture, and God disattached himself from Adam and Eve, so to speak, in such a way that 
that now they were left on their own in a world of sin and death. God says, you want to do it your way, you want to attempt to to maintain a paradisical earth, you want the attempt to maintain peace on earth, do you want to main, try to maintain immortality by and in and through yourselves, Adam and Eve, without me? Go for it. So they entered the dispensation of conscience. Basic understanding of right and wrong. We know that that, that basically lasted, that dispensation, that second dispensation lasted 1,656 years, all the way up to the time of Noah. And we find that sin was operating in that dispensation of consciousness. We find the first murder, Cain, uh, murdering his brother Abel. And we find the fruits of sin flourishing during that dispensation of consciousness, so much so that uh, we, come up, we come up to the time of the flood. And in Genesis chapter 6, right before the flood, at the end of that dis second dispensation, the world, because of man's decisions without God, had become so corrupt, brothers and sisters, so corrupt. It says the entire globe was full of wickedness. That's in Genesis chapter 6. There was even, there was even angelic behavior, interaction with, with fallen humanity that was blasphemous, which we won't get into here. There was a lot of strange things going on. Sin had reached a climax at the end of that second dispensation. So what does God do? God calls Noah. God calls Noah. In Genesis chapter 7, 11 uh, through 14, God sends a flood to the earth, and God says, I'm going to end the second dispensation by saving a remnant of human beings. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, or, uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord and his family, and God protected them, and God protected his animal kingdom through that flood. So we end the second dispensation with the flood and Noah. And then we enter the third dispensation. After the flood, the waters start to recede and the ark lands on the top of Mount Ararat and Noah and his family come out of that ark and now they're entering a new dispensation, a new time, a new era. And God gives them a covenant, the Noahic covenant. And we find that in Genesis chapter 8, verses 15, and Genesis chapter 9, verse 7. God gives Noah basically governing laws, having to do uh, with certain things. He gave them the law of capital punishment at that time, too. God had just destroyed the entire earth except for Noah and his family and an assortment of animals. And he tells Noah that you must now multiply and replenish the earth, refill the earth, and I want you to scatter and fill the earth. Well, as we enter and study that third dispensation of time, we find that Noah's descendants did not obey those commandments that God had given them regarding how to govern themselves. This is why we call it the, the age of human government. Noah had lived very old. He was in his hundreds, and his children, his prodigy, lived a long life. And so they had wisdom from the ages past. From the age past, they had wisdom from that dispensation. They knew what caused man to fall. They knew the problems with, with humanity. And, and they had all of this wisdom. And if anyone could have governed, brothers and sisters, during that time, it would have been Noah and his family. And so God put that responsibility on him by giving him the Noah covenant. Well, they didn't scatter and fill the earth. In Genesis 11, 1 through 4, they didn't scatter and fill the earth like God told them to do. So here comes another judgment, the third judgment. They, instead of scattering and fill the earth, they build a tower. It come, becomes known as the Tower of Babel. And they say that we don't need God. We're going to stick together. We're not going to scatter and fill the earth like God wanted us to do. We're going to stick together. And we're going to use our scientific knowledge minus God, our knowledge of good and evil minus God. And we're going to prosper and we're going to do everything to show that we don't need God. And we're going to build a tower so high that it reaches to the heavens. And we're going to do this to prove how awesome we are. We still see that happening in today's society. As a matter of fact, all the things which led to a destruction and judgment at the end of each dispensation, we see those same types of behavior magnified in today's world, brothers and sisters. We see the arrogancy and the pride of an atheistic generation. And so, <clears throat> now, that third dispensation, the Noahic dispensation, the dispensation of government ends with the Tower of Babel. And God comes down and he scatters them 
and he confuses their languages, and we enter the dispensation, or the patriarchal dispensation, some call it the dispensation of promise. And, and the patriarchal dispensation was the dispensation of family. We begin that all these, these new ethnicities break off, and they start speaking their own languages as God made that happen. And so there's all these different families operating. And instead of, in this age of diversity, the, the, the patriarchal dispensation, the fourth dispensation, we find that God creates this diversity, and they think, well, can man now operate under a diverse community? Can they take the different cultures and different languages and bring some kind of, uh, of amalgamation unity through multiculturalism? No, they could not. Wars broke out, families started fighting families, land divisions were created during that patriarchal dispensation. And so God comes down and he calls Abraham. And he, gives Abra he makes a covenant with Abraham called the Abrahamic Covenant. And we've discussed this in previous studies. This is the mother of all redemptive covenants. Because through Abraham, God was going to begin to call out a nation, Israel or Israel, that would, begin, that would form under that patriarchal dispensation towards the end of it. And that 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 nation that God called under Abraham would begin to survive all the other coming ages and dispensations. It would survive through all of them. And it would produce the offspring of the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, and it would ultimately produce the final last coming kingdom, the restoration of paradise on earth that Adam and Eve lost in that first dispensation. So what we find also in these dispensations is, is man is operating by himself minus God, trying to reestablish a perfect government and a perfect person. Man continues to try to develop a perfect government and a perfect, perfect person. And they continue to fail. And through each one of the dispensations, God is giving them little slightly new circumstances to give them chances to operate under these circumstances to show that without God, they can do nothing. Without God, they can do nothing. So we find that we enter finally at the end of the dispensation of promise or the patriarchal dispensation which Paul says in the book of Galatians lasted 430 years. Then God calls Moses. Now they ended that patriarchal dispensation by going into Egyptian bondage. They went into Egyptian bondage and then God calls Moses and God brings them into the fifth dispensation, the, patri the, the dispensation of law or the Mosaic dispensation or the legal dispensation it's called and so the God's people start to develop a relationship not so much directly with God as much as they start to develop a relationship with law law and order can a perfect law now bring humanity that perfect paradisical glory and that perfect person can a perfect law produce that and so under the Abrahamic covenant this is the longest dispensation it lasted 1490 one plus years until the coming of Jesus Christ and then that Mosaic Covenant that Mosaic Covenant ended along with the Mosaic Dispensation when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming his way and John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world and through that Lamb of God Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach we enter the beginning stages not the complete fulfillment but the beginning stages of that new covenant and thus we enter the church age or the dispensation of the church and that's the age that we're in today we are in the ecclesiastical dispensation if you're watching this you have been born blessed to be born in the age of grace in the a in the dispensation of God's mercy in God's grace God is showing extreme patience with this planet earth during this dispensation the dispensation yet to come is the seventh dispensation, which is the millennial reign of Jesus Christ on earth, which will be the beginning of the complete fulfillment of the Davidic covenant and the Abrahamic covenant and the Palestinian covenant. And finally, the new covenant. Those are the everlasting covenants, the made four major everlasting covenants 